I think parts C and D are probably better to think about before you do A and B. So I'm going to answer them first. So C says, which system above is most efficiently solved by using the substitution method explained? I would say um, that B is best used with substitution. And the reason why I would pick B is because one of the variables, in this case y, is isolated in the first equation. So since y is isolated in that first equation, it's very easy to substitute that into the, to the other one. And then which system above is most efficiently solved by using the elimination method? I would definitely have to pick A uh, because it's the only one left. But also because I can see that um, when I take these equal things and I combine these equal things, my y values are going to, uh, y variables are going to eliminate on the left hand side because they're opposite, right? They're both, I've got a negative 2y and a positive 2y. So I'm going to use elimination for a and I'm going to use substitution for b. So if we were to eliminate these things and I took the equal things on these two things are equal and I add these things that are equal to it I combine these equations boy that sounds like magic doesn't it it's not the first equation says two things are equivalent to each other right so if I had something like oh three is equal to three and I took and I said look I'm gonna add a five to both sides right and it doesn't matter what I added I could add a a 7 to this side and a 7 to this side. As long as I'm adding the same thing to both sides, I'm going to get things that are equal. Well, the second equation tells me that the negative 2x plus 2y is equal to negative 10. So essentially, I'm adding negative 10 to both sides, if you think about it. It's just the negative 10 I'm adding on this, this left side looks different. And the advantage is, is, of course, is that these are opposites in sign, and when I combine them, they're gone. So when I combine these equations, I simply get that x is positive 4. Okay, so now that I know what x is, I need to figure out y. And that was, that was super quick to get what x is. To figure out what y is, I'm going to plug this value x into one of the equations. I'm going to choose the top one. So I'm going to write 3 times what x is, 4, minus 2y is 14. So 12 minus 2y is 14. Negative 2y is, what is that, uh, just 2. 14 minus 12 is 2. So y would have to be negative 1. So I, my solution for this is the point 4 comma negative 1. And if I plug that point into both equations and check, it does, it does make both the left and the right hand sides of both equations the same. So let's move on to B. And this one we're going to solve using uh, substitution. Uh, this thing over on the left hand side of the first equation is equivalent to Y, right? That is 5x minus 3. So we're going to rewrite the second equation as negative 2x minus 4, but we're going to sub in, instead of y, we're going to put in something equivalent to y, which is 5x plus 3, and that will equal 10. So just cleaning this up a bit, using the distributive property, this is going to be a negative 20x, and this is going to be a negative 12, and that equals 10. So negative 22x is equal to, huh, that's interesting, positive 22. Therefore, x is uh, negative 1. And if x is negative 1, this top equation is the perfect place to figure out what y is. y is going to equal 5 times negative 1 plus 3. So we're looking at negative 5 plus 3. So y is the number negative 2. So my solution to part b is the ordered pair negative 1 for x and negative 2 for y. And yeah, I plugged those, those both in, and uh, it does give me the same thing on both sides. In this top equation, if I plug in negative 1 for x, this side becomes negative 2, and that's exactly what y is on the other side. And for the second equation, if I plug in negative 1 for x, then I'm going to end up getting a positive 2. And when I plug in negative 2 for y, 
that's a negative 4 times negative 2, which is a positive 8. And when I add 2 and 8, I also get 10. So that point works in both of the equations. So that's that's a, a another look at the methods for solving systems, substitution and elimination.